Guys, it's huge news. Today, Unreal Engine 5 is finally released. So in honor of that, in celebration of that, I want to continue my exploration of UE5 and how it applies to architectural visualization. And there's one tool that I haven't explored in my other videos yet. And frankly, I think it's probably the most important one for us ArcViz artists. Let's check it out. Okay, so you may have seen that recently I put UE5 up against V-Ray and saw how close we could get with the same camera, the same scene and everything, and seeing how close we can get them to match using real-time ray tracing. Okay, and actually I liked the results. It worked pretty well, but in the comments, you guys let me know that, you know, the, the best way to get something similar to what you get in V-Ray in UE5 would be to use the path tracing. And of course, that's correct. So let's look at that a little more in depth. This is a very interesting idea. Maybe you've seen in my last video with Twin Motion, where I explore that a little bit. Twin Motion has path tracing too. And in there, that's how you get the most realistic results. In UE5, we can also use path tracing. And it's not going to be real time, as in 30 frames a second or anything like that. But it's almost like, okay, everything is set up. Now I want to take a rendering of this. Okay, similar to like what we would do in V-Ray, except the navigation and everything else and setting up our scene would be in real time. And then we just say, okay, now pause for a second and generate a rendering of this, which is actually a super cool idea. And maybe that's the best way in which we could use Unreal Engine 5 and maybe it could displace our use of V-Ray a little bit more. Let's see. So in my scene here, in the exact same scene, I'm looking at this chair again, and this is what, what you're seeing here is the real time ray tracing. Uh, the lumen, I guess it would be. And as you saw in my other video, this looks pretty good. It's not exactly like the V-Ray, but it's pretty good. So let's see what it looks like with path, tra path tracing. First of all, you have to enable path tracing and it's easy to do that. If you go to edit project settings and I went down to system or platforms, windows, and under the default RHI, went to DirectX 12. Okay, make sure ray tracing is enabled. Okay, use hardware ray tracing when available. Okay, so this is what my settings look like. I had to reset my engine once I enabled that, and then it was ready to go. And path tracing is awesome because you don't have to do anything else. Like this is, this is the real-time ray tracing we're looking at here, but to go to the path tracing, all you have to do is go up and look at and change your view to a path tracing view. And you can see that immediately this starts looking better. Okay, the, re the thing that I really notice is the shadows, the contact shadows down here on the bottom of the chair, the reflection on the floor, and the reflection on the chair. And that's exactly what I was saying was lacking in the regular real-time ray tracing, but in path tracing, it's actually looking quite good. Let's switch back. Okay, you can see a major difference. There you go. That's pretty awesome. Now I need to put that up against the V-Ray rendering that I already had and see how that looks. But essentially this is going to be the most accurate as far as the closest to V-Ray, which we know is like super accurate, like perfectly accurate, physically accurate renderer. And path tracing is going to be the closest you can get to that in Unreal Engine 5. Now this isn't going to be real time. Like if I went out of this view Okay, you can see the path tracer kind of working and, and denoising itself, especially when I move around like this. So it takes a second to finalize, but I mean, it's giving you super good results and pretty fast. This is more like being in Vantage, right? This, over this is that Vantage, there's no learning curve. It's like It's like an easy button, right? It's plug and play. You just say, okay, put this in Vantage now, and you essentially have the same thing we're looking at here. But Unreal Engine is a lot more than that. It's a much, 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 much bigger program and much more powerful, way more capabilities inside of here. So it's going to be harder initially to get it up and running because Vantage is literally just like an easy button. Just say, okay, I want to see this in real time now. And Unreal Engine through Datasmith can translate from V-Ray into here. And you can get to the kind of results I'm seeing here. This is straight from a V-Ray scene too. But the learning curve is a lot higher and it isn't just 
you know, it isn't just kind of plug and play. You have to, you have to kind of get things up and running in UE5. But, but it looks to me results could be pretty similar. We're going to have to put them up next to each other and see. The only other thing here to consider is how many passes that it's going to do and controlling the settings of your path tracing. Okay, so just as an FYI, this is something, something you'll definitely need to know in order to use the path tracer. It can be controlled using a post-processing volume. There is a post-processing volume encompassing this whole scene. And in there, there's actually settings for the path tracing. If you search for it, you can actually... So the main thing that you'd want to adjust is the samples per pixel, which by default is set to 16384 for some reason. If you put it down to like 100, it's going to be less accurate but faster. If you put it to 30,000, it's going to be more accurate but slower. And the main thing, it's a lot like V-Ray where the main thing it's doing is trying to denoise, is trying to get rid of the noise, right? So the, the calculations are trying to refine it until it's it gets rid of all the noise. So to me, the reflection is looking really good here. The lighting is looking really good here. I could I could tweak it to get it looking better. But the interesting thing to me is that it really is calculating accurately, like contact shadows, soft shadows, and reflections on this leather. So I could refine it to make it look closer to V-Ray, but to me, it looks like the capability to match V-Ray is totally there. You'll notice that what happens here is the higher you set the pixels, the longer it, it refines the path tracing and then it just kicks in the denoiser and kind of softens everything. So you can turn that off completely and just watch it refine. Or you can set this to 15 and it just stops right there. Okay, so if you set it to 15, it's gonna go super fast, but then once the denoiser kicks in, it just softens it all like that. If you take the denoiser off, then it keeps it noisy. So the best quality would probably be setting this super high, letting it figure it out, and just turning the denoiser off. All right, so that's how you could get super accurate renderings. Okay, so super interesting development actually, and I'm excited that UE5 finally got released. I'm excited to explore more about this path tracer. This is just a little, a little preview. Let's generate a view and put it up next to the V-Ray thing. That'll be the end of this video because it's just a taste. I'll be getting into so much more of this stuff in the coming weeks and months. So make sure to subscribe. Let me know what you think about path tracer specifically, path tracing specifically in UE5. And if that changes how you look at these different softwares, if that changes your workflow, let me know. What do you think? Thanks for watching.